Welcome to the stories that shape our community. My name is Trevor Moore, and I'll be your host in this Southeast Alberta podcast series, where we explore the importance of putting local first and the power positive impact has on shaping our communities. These episodes are all about giving listeners a backstage pass as we explore the why behind these great local business stories. There is no one size fits all approach in business and these journeys are as unique as the people themselves. Our local guests will highlight the challenges, solutions and philosophies they have employed to overcome adversity, showcase resilience and have a positive and lasting impact in our community. This week, we'll tell the story through the eyes of Executive Director at Tourism Medicine Hat, Mr. Jace Anderson. I would love to put an analogy in here because for those of you that know me, I am a bit of an analogy demon, but Jace has the best analogy of the day and it's going to be right in the podcast where you learn the power of rocks, boulders, pebbles, and how they relate to tourism and attraction in our community. Welcome to the show today, Jace. Jace, I'm really excited to be here with you and and, and look at this scenario. I know when we look at um, when we look at you know the stories that shape our community and the whole you know the whole purpose of this podcast to share you know the inspirational stories, the business philosophies, the whys, the the, the why certain things work and the why that you do certain things certain ways. And you know we look at it from obviously when people hear business, probably don't think tourism medicine hat in the business sense. It's not your standard restaurant, bricks and mortar retail shop, etc just because it sort of has a different, you know, point of sale flow, right? Like it's a different, but so much of what you do in an organization applies to business. I mean, great organizations run under a very, very, you know, business-like uh, environment. So, you know, when you look at what you guys do, I, I want to I really, really dig in. We're going to go deep right out of the gates here, Jace. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is the old statement that if you want to go somewhere fast, go alone. If you want to go somewhere far, go with others. Is it safe to say... Jace, your mandate here is to go far. It's not to go fast. It's to bring others in. Absolutely. 100%. Another way to frame it for us is that the tide floats all boats. Ah, love it. High tide floats yeah, all boats. Ah, I yeah, love absolutely. it. Absolutely. And so we exist as an organization, as a society to strengthen and, and support Medicine Hat's destination awareness, its tourism capacity. And for us to do that, it's not us taking the work on ourselves and doing it. It's recognizing that we have in our community an amazing collection of stakeholders and partners, community members, individuals and organizations alike that are striving for these things. What can we do to give value and what can we do to support that work and how can we be a part of it? And so in that context, it is working with others because you go farther. Yeah, absolutely. You're sort of the, uh, I'm envisioning, I'm envisioning the, the conductor at the front of the opera. You're sort of conducting the, the, the dynamic, I suppose, in some respects and, and connecting stakeholders, connecting people, bringing the energy, uh, you know, riding the ebbs and flows of the music as it flows through. Would that be a fair description of, of, of a day in the life of Jay Sanderson? That is a very nice compliment that you would frame that way. And I appreciate it. I'm sure in some contexts, in some moments, I might feel like a conductor. In other moments, I'm not even on stage. I'm off stage and I'm cracking water bottles and making sure the lights and the sound are working for the people who are on stage. Because at the end end of the day, if uh, as a community or as a visitor to our community, if you don't know who I am or what I do, my job has been done reasonably well. It's not about ego. It's not about our organizational place. You know, you think about it. You think about the places you go, the things you and your family love to do. I would argue at no point do you think, oh, I like to do that because there's a DMO in that community that tells me about it. Right? Yeah. Like you flip the script, our stakeholders are delivering amazing experiences. They're creating opportunities for locals and visitors to come in community and, and be enriched. And our role is to, uh, to support, to inspire, and to help get that word out so that there is a greater market and a greater context of opportunity. We cast in a bigger net. Absolutely. Cast a bigger net. And when the tide's up and the net is cast, uh, Medicine Hat and Southeast Alberta win. And that's what we're doing, baby. We're I winning. love it. Maybe take us through, I mean, I look at, I look at, at your world of, you know, connecting, collaborating, mm -hmm. uh, and bringing this community together and, and trying to create this ecosystem where the businesses and the organizations and the community itself can, can thrive. Um, you know, let's look at some of the challenges. There's got to be some great gold there, some great nuggets. Like, 
Take me through a little bit about your job as somebody that's got to bring people on board. What are some of the challenges that you have? Because I mean, the outside, the outside picture at the end looks smooth. Mm. It's never smooth to get there, <laughs> right? You're, you're, you're balancing needs and wants and desires and egos and, and various things. What are some of the challenges that present themselves in your world in terms of creating that collaborative environment? Challenge is opportunity. It's mm -hmm. in how you frame it and how you reach it head on. And so for us, from a philosophy standpoint or perspective, I think one of the elements that have been important for us because we formed the DMO, it was a grassroots movement of community stakeholders. I was very fortunate to be involved uh, near the tail end of that time as we formed the society. And one of the things that we did intentionally was recognize that, first of all, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. Those are three specific steps in relationship building. They take time and you can't easily jump from one to the other, but each one is a risk where it falls off if we, if we perform or deliver poorly. Mm -hmm. You lose those opportunities. But if we're working with people we know, like, and trust, then our role as a collaborator, as an organization that exists to support other individuals and organizations, is to recognize that People know, like, and trust us better fundamentally when we bring value first. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it time and time again in this community, in other communities, in the tourism space, and I'm fortunate to have been here now for a number of years. You see organizations or stakeholders, you see people roll in, not in Medicine Hat perhaps, but in other communities, they will roll in and they start to tell other groups what they need or what they want from them. I'm building something. I need this from you. I need this from you. And without knowing, liking, and trusting them, mm -hmm. you're, you're putting yourself, they're putting themselves in a place where they're extracting value from somebody else. Now you think about that just in basic relational terminology, and that's fundamentally broken mm -hmm. and it's short-term transactional thinking. But if what we're talking about is long-term or long tail or lifetime value for the work we do, then let's give value first because that builds the knowing, liking, and trusting paradigm. And then when we need something, the people that we're working with are more inclined to see the value in the relationship and want to contribute and be a part of that. That's been fundamental for us because when we launched, one of the things that we talked about internally, and I believe I had the opportunity to talk about externally with stakeholders, was that the last thing I wanted to do was eat anyone else's lunch. And yet when you're in a new space, sometimes the threat or the potential threat is, what am I doing that you're here to take? Yeah. And so I am inclined to become a silo and I become protectionist and mm -hmm. to lose the perspective that the community wins when the tide floats all boats. And so we're just really intentionally in that space. And we're fortunate that exists because we're a not-for-profit society. It's a simple society. And we have a industry-led board of directors. And those folks around the table, those men and women, understand both what we're doing in community. They understand the community of Medicine Hat in Southeast Alberta. And they understand some of the watermarks, the goals, the, the targets that we're striving for. Mm -hmm. And none of that is six-month, 12-month targets. Like, it's not, it's not, did I get results on this campaign? It's did, as our industry matured, evolved, has our community grown and benefited from the fact that we're here? And that's the kind of impact we want to make. I love it. I love it. And, and you know, obviously, um, knowing you in many capacities and having dealt with you in, in a variety of different hats in the last sort of 10 years yeah. plus, yeah. Um, stories all of their own, I'm sure. Um, I, I look at, you know, obviously, you know, building, building relationships and those types of things. You know, I'm, I'm a huge believer that we don't spend time building relationships. Mm -hmm. We invest time building relationships. Spending means we give up today. <laughs> Investing means we give up today for tomorrow. I like that. Um, it, 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 it matures with time, right? Mm -hmm. And that is just such an important part of building relationships in a business as well, is it's not about today, it's about tomorrow. It's about how we can withdraw these dividends down the road mm -hmm. when we've built capital that we just compound interest on interest on interest, right? Like that's the whole growth, isn't it? Is yeah, that whole it perspective. Is. It is. And I, I think it's important to recognize that not everybody we come in contact with sees it the same way. They don't always appreciate it. They haven't been exposed to it. They might not trust it. You know, it's something mm -hmm. that we can say easily perhaps, but the reality is that we have 
bills to pay. We have uh, um, metrics we have to hit this week, this month, this quarter. And so people are living sometimes in that immediacy of need, which is why trust comes from us supporting them. And so you take a, a stakeholder in our industry that has an immediate quarterly need. And while I'm thinking about three to five to 10 years down the road for our community in this industry, if I can bring tangible value to the stakeholder that has a need in the next three months, that helps them to understand that, that we, first of all, we care and that we live with empathy. And COVID has caused uh, many of us to reevaluate the sense of empathy because mm -hmm. uh, the tourism industry was the first hit, the hardest hit. And we're very fortunate, those of us who are still at work in this industry, we're very fortunate. I'm humbled by that opportunity. But the reality is when we can support them in those moments, whether it's high stress or need or otherwise, then when they're back, uh, whatever back looks like, when they're in that place, um, they're more inclined to understand the knowing, the liking and the trusting and not see us as um, a challenge or a threat or a nuisance because we're asking for things. And the, the simplest way I can define that for you really quickly, there are in our industry, a couple of different models for a dining guide, a publication that celebrates and brags about food, drink, and the culinary opportunities. A lot of DMOs or destination marketing organizations in a lot of communities in North America have what I would refer to as a pay to play model. You buy an ad and you're in my magazine. And I give this magazine to people who say, I want something to eat. And in that magazine is eight or 10 or 28 restaurants. They're not the best 28 restaurants in the community. Those are the 28 that ponied up money. Okay. That's pay to play. That works and it's expected. It's business. It, you know, we're not for profit. And we approach things differently. We're very fortunate with the level of funding we have from our municipality and our industry at large. And so what we did strategically is we said we will include all of our restaurants in our dining guide. And it's not pay to play. Because what we want to do is drive awareness and understanding and appreciation for that segment of our brand pillar, those mm -hmm. industry partners, that opportunity that plays better plays better locally and internally, I believe, because we're supporting all of them. We're not picking favorites. But it also means that when, frankly, when somebody says, where am I going to get a good steak? You can open up our guide and I'll show you five, or 10, or 15 places you can get a, an amazing piece of steak. You go to another community in Alberta that only includes the steakhouse that bought the ad and they've done themselves a disservice and they've done it because it was transactional and they just wanted short-term money. Yeah, that's a great example. I want to I want to dig a little deeper on, on on two pieces. You talk a lot about the no like and trust factor, and I mean it's it's a, a it's it's popular. It's there. It's it's something they believe in. I feel like there's a fourth step to it that mm. we forget. Okay, and I feel like we we walk people through no like trust, and then eventually they believe in us. The no like trust and believe element to that equation, and I think that's sort of the long term where we go with this, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like that. Another way to frame that, I think, would be that, you know, we have um, in business, we have leads, then we have customers, and those customers become uh, champions. Mm -hmm. And again, it's ta it, it takes tangible steps to get one place to the next. There's jumps involved, there's some nuance in how that all plays out, but that's for a different podcast entirely. But the reality is that when people arrive at the end of that spectrum, if you will, in that space that where they believe, then they have that full rear view mirror. They can see the history that led them to that place. Again, if you just sort of strip away everything we're talking about, think about it relationally. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationships we have that are deep and secure and meaningful have these moments in them. And it's when we don't have those moments that those relationships uh, either don't form or don't last. There's no, there's no root to them, to the, you know, the use of clay. We talked about bricks and how, how foundational that is for a community like ours uh, in the history and the context of our industry. Um, that's a visual representation of what that means or what it can mean when the time is taken. Yeah. So it is, uh, it's going further, uh, not faster. Yeah. It's going with others, not alone. And it's giving first, 
and uh, asking or expecting value in return, second, you know, secondary or tertiary, even down the line. Um, another part of this scenario is uh, I like to look at, I mean, if I were, if I were to look at, at tourism per se as, as, a, as a person, not in my local community, when I go elsewhere, yep. um, you know, it, tourism is, is about, obviously it's about embracing your you know, community stakeholders from a business and the standpoint there, but it's also partly engaging the community. Uh, when you go to, you know, any, let's just use Banff National Park as an example. If I go to Banff National Park and ask anybody I see on the street from Banff, hey, what do I need to do when I'm here in Banff? They're going to give me all of the touristy hotspots because why? That's what they assume I'm here for. Where if you change the question and say, hey, quick question for you. I heard you talking about you have kids. What do you and your kids do for fun here? Whole different ball game. Uh, on that question. It is so important to have the community on board with those elements and, and, and important pieces. So take me through how you manage that scenario. I mean, obviously it's, it's your stakeholders, but then it's those secondary community stakeholders. How do you bring that big picture together? That can't be easy. Uh, it all becomes for us a matter of authenticity. Mm. And so understanding not simply what a visitor to our community wants, but understanding what our community does, does well, and is most proud or engaged in, then focus the, the light, the spotlight on that. And so, you know, we talk about DMOs being in the inspiration business. It's not inspiration to do something new locally, but it's recognizing what's being done locally so that we can give that inspiration to somebody from out of town. Mm -hmm. And so when they're in a community like Medicine Hat, they're not looking for Lake Minnewanka. Like they're not looking for that national uh, or international brand standard moment. They want to engage. They want to be present. They want to see and, and be where folks in Medicine Hat are, that they have these alignment opportunities. And so we get excited about coffee shops and we get excited about um, independent restaurants and we get excited about the breweries and the trail networks. These are things that our community seems to be doing remarkably well. We're not doing it. We're celebrating and supporting visitors from a leisure context participating. We are not a, uh, in the, classic traditional definition of a tier one tourism market. We're not perhaps in that same place as Banff and Jasper and Lake Louise uh, or even Canmore. Hate to break it to you and your listeners. Um, <laughs> we're, we're maybe not in that space. We're not competing with them. We're looking to align and be a part of. And so we can, we can leverage some opportunities. So we're a tier two or, or tier three destination in that space. That sets us apart. It means we win some fights that they lose frankly. And I'm, I'm quite happy about that. But we also give them some space to win because we're not going to try and compete with them. We're not going to try and be something we're not. That sort of loses the sense of authenticity, doesn't it, if yeah. we're trying to pretend. The other one, though, is the, the sense of rocks, boulders, and pebbles. And I'm a big fan of mantras. I've got a handful of them, but I'm going to keep reusing them because I don't have that many. <laughs> but the rocks, boulders, and pebbles uh, concept is very simply, the boulder is the big, uh, in a tourism context, it's the big reason why we travel. So what is that going to be for us? I mean, um, I, I've never been, but I suppose Disneyland would be a boulder. That's the, the place they're going. Maybe Banff is the boulder. That's the place they're going. Then you get the rocks and the rocks are, they support the boulder. In the absence of those rocks, the boulder is just going to be out on its own. And so you start to pile rocks around it. Those rocks are going to be smaller museums. They're going to be some of the restaurants. They're going to be the accommodation where you stayed, whether you're camping or whether you're in a hotel or in your family's um, rumpus room. All of this, you have those rocks, and, but those experiences matter. And then you get the pebbles. And the reality is the pebbles are the people you talk to. The experience you have when you're buying a coffee, how your family's treated when you're buying an ice cream and you don't know what any of the flavors are and you're just trying to sort it out and get out of line because it's the end of a long day and you've been driving too long anyway. It's these moments of intensity. And the takeaway, for us at least in the industry, is that we travel because we want to boulder we love the rocks in our travel and it's the pebbles that make or break the trip and the experience because the boulder doesn't matter if the pebbles are absent or flawed. I might never make that trip again. Mm. 
But when I have good pebbles and when the community, and they do in Medicine Hat, they have good pebble infrastructure and good rock infrastructure. And the boulders we have that do exist for us, they're not Banff and they're not Disneyland, but the boulders we have as a community that exist, we succeed as a community in those spaces. Those are cool. I love it. So like the, the, the idea, I love the boulders, rocks, pebbles. So it's like the, the boulder gets them here. The rocks help them stay here and the pebbles want them to keep coming back here. Like, yeah. They make the difference. The, the pebbles make the difference, yeah, it's right? It's not just a fly through and one and done. It's, this was great. Let's go mm -hmm. back again. Mm -hmm. uh, I love so it. So it's the contrast in all of us between when we're traveling, we're on the road. Do you sort of tend to lean into a brand restaurant because it's familiar and you know what to expect? Or is your personality one that sort of leans into something that's local or authentic or uh, completely foreign to you? And, and in that moment, you're going for a reason. Now that's going to be the rock in the travel. The way you're treated, the taste, the way it goes, the way everything, the entire experience completes, that's whether you go back to that restaurant or you go, no, I'm trying something new next time. Jace, uh, it has been absolutely awesome talking with you. We've had some great sound bites. I love your philosophy on just collaboration and getting people in the community together. I love the way that you collaborate to be part of something bigger than yourselves and, and really understand that we don't need to, like I said, fight for our piece of the pie. Let's just collectively get together, bake more pies, and we're all going to go. And as you said, to maybe wrap up in a quote of yours, high tide floats all boats. I love it. Yes. Jace, thank you for your time. It's been awesome and really enjoyed having you on the show today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for the invite. Thank you to our podcast sponsor, the Medicine Hat and District Chamber of Commerce, who is fueling the business community in Southeast Alberta. Through connections, support, and influence, they are driven to shape our community. Their hope is that this podcast will help you fuel your passion for supporting local first. To learn more about the Medicine Hat and District Chamber of Commerce or to watch more episodes of the stories that shape our community, please visit their website, medicinehatchamber.com backslash stories that shape our community. In addition, please follow us on your favorite podcast streaming app so you don't miss any of the unique stories we share, the inspiring guests who share them, and the impact they have had on Southeast Alberta. Stories are all around us. We just need to connect to be able to share them. If you want to be featured on this podcast with a story of your business or organization, or if you know of a story that should be shared, please submit a nomination through the Chamber website. Thank you for listening today. We look forward to sharing more stories with you that help shape our community. I'm Trevor Moore, the host of Stories That Shape Our Community, and I challenge you all, be sure to help shape our community through your own story.